Good morning and the very warmest of welcomes to St. Edmundsbury Cathedral. Welcome to you gathered here in the cathedral and welcome to all of you joining us on the live stream from home. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul on ordination weekend. Uh, we're delighted to have Bishop Martin with us. He was here yesterday, he's here this afternoon and he's here this morning for the purpose of celebrating for us but also the purpose of installing and welcoming our new head verger, James Stark. I'm not going to give you any of the notices because they are on the bulletin that you will have received by now. So I hope you can be aware of those notices which you should have received by email. We're going to move straight into the presentation on page three in your order of service. It's lovely to be with you. Uh, it's lovely to be with you on, uh, this is hardly a normal Sunday, no Sunday is a normal Sunday, but, uh, but to be with you in the, the, the parish Eucharist. So I, it, it's a particular joy. And I think this is the first time for a long time, at least a year, uh, that I've been able to share with you here on a Sunday morning. So it's a great joy. This is also a great joy. Blessed are you, God of heaven and earth. You call us to be your people, the body of Christ. There are varieties of gifts. But the same spirit. There are varieties of service. But the same Lord. There are different kinds of working. But the same Bishop, I present to you James Stark to be commissioned as head verger in this cathedral church of St. James and St. Edmund. The chapter has appointed to this cathedral church, James Stark, as head verger. James, you've been found worthy of the role to which you have been appointed. Is it your will that we commission you now into this role? We meet in the name of the Father and... I've skipped a page. This is why I should come here more often, isn't it? <laughs> James, this cathedral church is a sign of the presence of the light of Christ in this diocese, in this county and in the local community. And worship lies at the heart of the cathedral's mission for God and to the world. Are you ready to take upon you the responsibilities as head verger, caring for and maintaining our buildings and estate, and working with the clergy, the chapter and the cathedral community, continuing to make this cathedral a place of welcome, worship and hospitality? I am. I now invite James to be vested by his mum. Just like old times, isn't it? <laughs> James, wear this, the outward and visible sign of your office. James, receive this verge, a sign of the dignity of your office. We pray together. Faithful God, give to your servant James the gift of your Holy Spirit. Protect him always with your love. Strengthen him to work diligently, to serve this community and holy place, and to love, serve, and worship you always. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. James, I hereby commission you as the head verger of this, our cathedral church. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve and keep you. The Lord give you grace, wisdom, 
faithfulness, courage and love in all your work for him now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to put their books down and applaud. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. 
as we prepare to celebrate the mystery of God's love revealed in word and sacrament, let us call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus, in your love you invite us to be your followers, yet we do not always follow you with our whole heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your joy you send us to bring good news to a waiting world, yet we sometimes forget your call. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your power you strengthen us in faith and love, yet we often fail to show love to others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God our Father forgive you your sins and bring you to the fellowship of this table with his saints forever. Amen.
as we celebrate the feast of St. Peter and Paul, let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified you in their death as in their life, grant that your church, inspired by their teaching and example, and made one by your Spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About that time, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with the sword. After he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and handed him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was brought, was going to bring him out, Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up, quickly! And the chains fell off his wrists. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realize that what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane, when suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. 
And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. of our living and loving God who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen. Please sit down. Question. Is it a good thing to be a rock? Sounds like it should be. Jesus affirms Simon, son of Jonah, when he recognizes him as the Messiah and says to him, you are Peter, the rock on which I will build my church. Trouble is, that particular rock turns out to be a bit more flaky than the sort on which you'd want to build anything. A big statement making and then denying and running away kind of rock. A rock who has to be coaxed back into fellowship and self-forgiveness after being a big statement-making, then denying and running away kind of rock. Not the kind of rock on which you'd really want to trust to build anything. But presumably Jesus knows all of this already. But presumably when he affirms Peter as his rock, he knows the quality of what he's chosen to build his church upon, knows just how crumbly Peter's going to be, and yet still chooses him. So perhaps we must conclude that Jesus chooses Peter precisely because of who he is, not in spite of who he is, which personally I find quite scary. Because personally, I'm all too used to putting the bits of myself which I don't believe to be acceptable into little boxes so I can hide them away from God. But what if God, who is Christ-like, what if God, in whom there is no un-Christ-likeness at all, looks at me, looks at you, and affirms what God sees with all the little bits of us that don't fit together, loves and trusts and affirms what God sees in all the rickety, crumbly, flaky bits of you and I. Rather like Jesus looking at Peter, those impetuous words still on Peter's lips and having a fairly good idea of what's going to happen before eventually they'll come to face each other in the resurrection appearances during breakfast on the beach and still says you are the rock you are the rock on which I will build my church James Starkey you asked me if I was going to use this sermon to say all sorts of nice things about you <laughs> I will say this we chose you because of who you are as a person we know you can do the job, no problem. It's essentially your character that led us to appoint you. 
We need the unflustered rock-like calm in the face of big services and challenging visitors and deans who change their minds at the last minute. Yes, certainly we need that. But more than that, we need the unpretentious, unshowy, undefended, open and friendly individual into who you have grown to be at the heart of this cathedral ever since you arrived here before your birth. Cathedrals are big spaces. They put on big occasions. Cathedrals can be intimidating. They could cause people not to feel connected. They could cause people to feel put off or alienated. And that's not what we want. We want people to know that this space is theirs, of all faiths and none. More than that, we want them to know that here, the love of God can take them by surprise and touch their hearts. That here, their sadnesses can be expressed. Here, their half-articulated prayers offered. Here, their joy is magnified, and it's our job. It's your job and my job and the job of everyone who works here to help that to happen by the welcome we offer, by the liturgies we curate, by the holy ground we tend, and most of all, by the kind of people we are. Rocks are smoothed by the buffeting of the seas. Rocks are shaped by contact with other rocks. Rocks are polished by time and human skill. Sometimes rocks are split open by huge events, and when they're split open, they reveal the beauty within, layers of depth which speak of the impact of time. So most of all, in the way that you hallow this space, in the way that you run your team, in the way that you work with your colleagues, in the way that you welcome the diocese, the county and the town, please continue to be who you are, friendly and joking. Please continue to be equal in your treatment of the Lord Lieutenant, the Bishop, royalty and the homeless person who comes seeking food, the weeping and the desperate and the lonely who comes seeking consolation. For all of them are the unseen Christ, our guests. Continue to allow God to smooth you, to polish you, to shape you. Remember that rocks don't need to be impervious. The great Welsh priest and poet R.S. Thomas wrote, Remembering rock penetrated by grass blade, corrected by water. We must ask rather for the transformation of the will, for more loving mutations, for the better ventilating of the atmosphere of the closed mind. Your mind, James, is open and generous. Let it remain so as you take your place as our head verger. Let warmth, generosity and inclusivity continue and grow as the hallmarks of this place as we seek in new and creative ways to be the church. Secure, rock-like and vulnerable enough so that all through our ministry may find their resting place in God.
Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe and trust in one God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Encouraged by our fellowship with apostles, evangelists, and all the saints, let us make, let us make our prayers to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, your Son called men and women to leave the past behind them and to follow him as disciples in the way of the cross. Look with mercy upon those whom he calls today, marks with the cross, and makes his disciples within the church. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your son told his disciples not to be afraid, and at Easter breathed on them his gift of peace. Look with mercy upon the world into which he sent them out, and give it that peace for which it longs. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your Son formed around him a company where no longer servants but friends. And he called all those who obeyed him, his brother and sister and mother. Look with mercy upon our families and our friends and upon communities in which we serve. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Your Son sent out disciples to preach and heal the sick. Look with mercy on all those who yearn to hear the good news of salvation and renew among your people the gifts of healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your Son promised to those who followed him that they would share the banquet of the kingdom. According to your promise, look with mercy on those who have walked with Christ in this life and have now passed through death. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Almighty God, grant that your church may faithfully hold and make known the faith that has come to us through the apostles, that with them, and all your saints, we may inherit the glories of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are fellow citizens <clears throat> with the saints of, and the household of God through Christ, our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who are far off and those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
God keep us united in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and the prayers, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to indeed right and good that we should give you thanks, praise and glory, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For after his resurrection, he sent out his apostles and evangelists to preach the gospel to all nations and lead us in the way of truth. Himself the chief cornerstone, he founded his church upon the apostles, firmly to stand forever as a sign of your holiness upon earth and a living witness to all of the way that leads to heaven. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we lift our voices and join in their unending hymn of praise. Praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us 
the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes again in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Die. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with our blessed lady St Mary, St Peter, St Paul, St James, St Edmund and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. rejoicing in the presence of God here in our midst. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
the prayer for spiritual communion for those uh, watching by live stream and joining worship at home. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus, for all the benefits you've given me, for all the pains and insults you've borne for me. Since all your family cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into their hearts. So, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, prepared for the Jesus. Amen. I understand that this is the first time that the Young Ladies Choir has sung, as it were, without um, pesky boys around. So let's give them a huge round of applause because they've done an amazing job. Peace be with you. And also with you. God, who has prepared for you a city with eternal foundations, bring you with all the saints to the eternal and triumphant joy of that city and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Before the final words, a request from the wardens. When the service ends in a few moments, please don't hang around. Please depart the building as speedily and safely, of course, as you can. The ordinations this afternoon are come up quickly after this service and there's cleaning and sanitizing to do. So be friendly to each other outside the building, not inside this morning. Following God's saints, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.